I don't think I can do any more uh, than introduce you, Dayton, and uh, Yes. Wow. Who hasn't been there since 1960? <laughs> <laughs> so my name is David Holly. I'm the general and artistic director of Greensboro Opera. But I wear a couple of hats. I'm also the director of opera at UNCG in my 31st year. Um, so, uh, thank you. It's, uh, it's really an honor to be in a place where um, I can hire and use singers that are at the highest of the profession, uh, some from New York and from the Met, and then have our students who sing in the chorus and play in the orchestra and sometimes sing smaller roles and be right on the stage, hoping to be where these other artists are. So it's a great laboratory, actually, and uh, they can learn more in a production than they ever could in, in a book. So um, the hat I'm going to talk about today <laughs> is my job. At Greensboro Opera, I've been the artistic director since 2013, and um, as I go through this PowerPoint production, this is old. We've actually got a new Prosperity Six study. Um, how many have heard that Greensboro's tournament town? Right, yeah. right. It is. But the fact is, it's so much more than that. The arts play such a huge part in the economy of Greensboro. 162.2 uh, million in total economic activity supports five. 1,963 FTE jobs, 112.1 million in household income, and 15.6 million in local and state government revenue. And that's even before the Tanger Center opened up, which I believe is going to drive a whole lot more economic impact. So culture and arts are a significant amount of what Greensboro offers. Now this is, uh, we're getting ready to announce our season for 23-24, which starts on April 1st. But this is just a snapshot of what we did this past year. We reinvigorated our youth opera camp, we call it Go-Yo, um, and partnership with Mountain Zion Baptist Church. It's a two-week uh, camp on, uh, on the campus at uh, Mountain Zion Baptist Church. These children learned from the second act of La Boheme, the children's <coughs> chorus, and they built the sets, and they built the costumes, and then they performed little excerpts from it. So um, on July 13th, we're huge into partnerships with other arts organizations, and for over 15 years or so, we've collaborated with Eastern Music Festival in the summertime, so we have a, a collaboration, we call it I Love Paris. It was all leading toward our November production of Puccini's <coughs> La Boheme. We have a, uh, in the fellowship hall at, at um, Temple Emmanuel, we put a stage in the middle and chairs around and sell it out. We had two performances of 250, um, so uh, it, it's a less formal introduction to opera where we do some opera and musical theater. Um, and then, Je t'aime la bohème, which means I love la bohème. We did a fall gala at the Vineyard. That's Marty Cotis's painted plate venue out there on West Ridge behind um, Sprout's parking lot there. We did a gala, and then we did Puccini's La Bohème, sometimes thought of as the most perfect, famous opera. That was uh, in November. How many of you got a chance to see La Bohème? Good, a bunch. Um, and that was with David Pershall. He is a uh, baritone. Uh, it's all about relationships, my job. It's relating with artists, relating with the, the, the community, relating with the audience. David, I met in 2005 when he was a junior at Baylor University. I guest directed a, a Johnny Skeeke, a Puccini opera. <coughs> and he, it was the first opera he ever did. And I watched his career as he's gone on. He went on to um, Juilliard and, and then uh, singing at the Met, and because I had this relationship with him, I said, David, you know, come do my Escamillo in Carmen. John, right? Yes. You asked for an excerpt from Carmen. Yes, sir. <laughs> do regional offers anymore to the Met and um, I'm over in Europe but it's, it's all about relations it's really important so David's a really dear friend and then I'm excited to tell you uh, February 6th through 8th so now the first half is what we've done and this is coming up 
um, February 6th through 8th, operate for Carolina, and I'll, I'll hold the details to one, a slide coming up. And then a Wellspring Chamber Opera, we also collaborate with Wellspring. If you've not been out to the Wellspring uh, Virginia Somerville Sutton Theater, it's a $12 million theater that they built out there in 2019, and uh, we became an anchor tenant there. We've done Hansel and Gretel, we've done Amal, and the Night Visitors, we do a lot of education events out there, because Wellspring really values the arts. And then um, March 30 through 31st, April 2nd, my UNCG Spring Opera is, because we have an official collaboration with you, uh, with Greensboro Opera, <coughs> and the UNCG Opera Theater, we, we count that as part of the season. So it's a very active um, year, it's a, and that's a nice rhythm. So we have fun at Greensboro Opera. This is from a gala that we did in support of Pagliacci, which is the clown, the clown opera. Um, many of you are old enough to remember the, the um, commercial where the guy pour, pours a bowl of cereal and his, his Rice Krispies run out and he sings, No more Rice Krispies! We've run out of Rice Krispies! And that's from, that's, that's, that's from Pagliacci as well. So it's all, it was all clown themed and so this, these are some board members. Um, that they just, we just love to have fun and support the opera. So I also like to make opera accessible. So many people think opera is the fat lady with the horns and the breastplate singing at the top of their lungs in a foreign language. Well, we did Dawn of the Regiment. It's the first opera that uh, they did under, under my uh, leadership as the uh, artistic director. And it's a story about a girl who grows up amongst a regiment of men. They all think that they're responsible for her, that she was orphan. So they all take on the role as thinking they're her, her father. So we said, who's your daddy? <laughs> that, was, that, that was in the publicity. So we're trying to make it more, you know, it, it's not inaccessible and you'll see how we reach a younger audience. Porgy and Bess was one of the greatest things we've done. That was a year ago. What's the name? The 19th? Yes, yes. A year ago in two days. The 21st and 23rd. Uh, and Rhiannon Giddens, who just won a Grammy. Uh, she's a Greensboro gal, started the Carolina Chocolate Drops, won a Grammy with them, and then went off on a solo career. <coughs> now she's the artistic director of Silk Road, took over for Yo-Yo Ma, wrote an opera. She's just amazing. She came back and sang best for us. We sold out the Tanger Center, a few performances. It snowed on opening night as people were going back. I'm glad I could arrange that. It was really <laughs> magical. It was great. So that was last year. Wow, it was a great show. It was, it was, it was a great show. Thank you. I appreciate that. God is good. Yeah. But we also do it in traditional operas like Madame Butterfly. You can see beautiful photography. This is uh, Van Der Veen's photography. He's my photographer and his wife. But here's Pagliacci. I love this photo. Can you see that? I love. You can. Yeah. I love this photo because I think this is how we all felt during the pandemic. No! <laughs> so this is the this is the uh, Commedia dell'arte characters in Pagliacci. Um, both the baritone and the tenor each sung at the Metropolitan Opera. Richard Zeller and Joel Sorensen. Joel Sorensen is a grad of UNCG, so it's, it's just a, a really cool way that I'm, I'm able to, my worlds collide. <coughs> Sydney Outlaw, this was in uh, Rossini's La Cenerentola, an adaptation of Cinderella. So you can see the beautiful costumes and scenery and all that we're able to put on stage. Again, also Cenerentola. Well, let me get through this, because I really want to get to... So those are productions. Woo! Lots of Cenerentola. All right, this is really cool. Opera at the Carolina, which happens on the 6th and the 8th of February. It's in three weeks. We bring every Guilford County fifth grader down to the Carolina Theater, and they get to see a live production or somewhere of 6,000 kids on the 6th, 7th, and 8th. 1,000 kids at 10, 15. Do a show, and then move them out, and a thousand kids at 11.30 will get to see a show. Maybe the very first and only time they get to see a live theatrical production, a collaboration with the Gilbert County Schools, <coughs> it's the UNCG Opera Theater, it's my students that produce the show. And this is one of my favorite photos. You've got a kid coming off the bus and running into the theater. I know that so many of these kids think, oh, we're going to go to the opera. We're going to go to the opera. But I make it fast and exciting and relevant and cha hopefully change minds. And they may not become opera singers or opera performers, but at least they might appreciate it and they might remember it 
years down the road. Wow, I remember seeing, seeing that opera. This is really special. We not only put on a 45 minute cut down version of a full opera, like in, in a few weeks we're doing <coughs> Hansel and Gretel by Humperdinck, and it's a 90 minute opera, but we're reducing it to 45 minutes. But before that, we have a little 12 minute opera <coughs> called Write Your Own Opera. So the fourth graders last year in April, May, and June submitted stories to me, creative writing stories. So the, the school system loves it. It promotes literacy and writing and vocabulary and all. They submit stories to me, and I choose the best one. I turn it into a libretto, which are the words of an opera, and I pass it off to one of my colleagues who's a, com a composer at UNCG. I've got two of them, Alejandro Ruti and Mark Engelbrecht, and then they write this little opera. So that the child that wrote the story in fourth grade, they come in fifth grade and they get to see their story and it turned into an opera. It turned into an opera. So it's really cool. So that's Barbara Peters right there with Janet Hentley, who was our president. And that, I just explained that. Um, that's exactly what I just explained. But there's a little child, Lily Leach, that was a few years ago. And we have a VIP reception she gets to meet. Barbara Peters, her family was there. Uh, she saw her name um, in the program. She gets a little uh, medallion and a, and a certificate. Um, it's one of my favorite things during the year out. That's the yeah, beer for the beer. That's my father, actually. As I <laughs> That's 20 years ago. But these kids, you can see, they come and, and they're they're excited and and they're prepared by their teachers and they say, okay. We're going to go see an opera today, and it's very interactive. I meet with them. I bring the, the, the child that won up on stage, and they're a rock star in front of their own kids. They're validated, and um, a thousand kids cheer for them. It's really a, an amazing thing. And you can see the kids are just... The, the Carolina Theater used to have these seats that went, <laughs> and I could always tell if they were bored, you'd hear, <laughs> so that was my telltale sign. But you can see, they are really, really grabbing and watching. Um, the stories that I should, oh, you'd be amazed at the stories I get. I get a lot of zombie stories, and I get a lot of ray guns and aliens that I could never put on a stage. So I tried to choose stories that tell it, um, a moral, but I get Sometimes bullying, anti-bullying, um, discrimination. Um, there are some stories where the child says, the, 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 the main character, parents didn't want them to sing. But I tell them, look, not all of you are going to be doctors and lawyers. If you want to be musicians, if you want to be artists, chase that dream. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. So there's a lot of really good, cool messages that I try to tell. And then they get to meet the cast. This is Magic Flute that we did, and the kids <coughs> come out and, and they actually get to, to, to see the singers that they just saw up on stage. It was a really neat experience. So as I said, so far, Greensboro Opera adds to the economic and the cultural and the education. So it's really three things, economic, cultural, and educational <coughs> impact that we have on the lives of our residents. So what's next? Opera for Carolina is, as I said, in three weeks, and then we will collaborate with EMF in July, and then we're getting ready to announce our seasons of performances at Wellspring and a variety of other um, venues. That was fast. That was a lot. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. We shake your hand on the EMF collaboration, but what would they expect? I don't know yet, actually. We, it usually is geared toward whatever offers we choose. <coughs> so we've been talking maybe about some, actually maybe some patriotic things. Yes? How long have you been doing the kid offer thing? We started in 2010, so 13 huh? years. Yeah. Well, we've read about 13, 14 of them. I wonder where some of those kids are now. I do too. That's really <laughs> <laughs> now you're right. They, yeah. they, they might have uh, decided this is what I want to do. <laughs> Statistically, <laughs> first I love your passion and energy. Uh, and it's amazing. Excellent. You're there. You're the right person to work with. Number two, I've talked to you about this substitute teaching at one of the Northern School District. I've heard your story from somebody. And it's, as you say, it's the first and often their only exposure to that kind of thing. 